you have basically everybody who is somebody in the NFL is in Indianapolis at that point. I was telling the Killer Bees earlier, you can't throw a football without hitting somebody that's you know notable in the NFL. I, I was on the phone with you and Frank Reich walked right by me. Yeah, this is a great story. So at the time, <laughs> I was doing my national show on Sports Map Radio, and Cody was covering the combine for SportsMap.com and Sports Map Radio. So I had him on as a guest to recap like one of the days at the combine. Mid-interview, he's like, oh, that's Frank Reich. And what, Frank Reich heard you say, yeah, oh, that's Frank Reich? He turned around, gave me a little wave, and they kept going. I love it. <laughs> should have got him on the show. I know, right? should have gave him the phone. Be like, hey, you want to do a national radio interview? <laughs> yeah, Come on, right. Coach, you're, you're beloved at Houston. Come on. Uh, Yeah, so, I mean, the combine is just, it's very cool. You that get, was a joke, by the way. Yeah, I know. Making sure that was known. You get good access to the top players. I mean, this basically the only time you'll get access to some of these top guys. They don't talk or do a ton of media or press or anything like that uh, ahead of the draft. And so you get access to those guys. And then what I enjoyed was you know, the way they set it up is they have about eight podiums and they put like the top eight players roughly at those podiums. And then they have like small tables and they just sit the rest of those guys in that position group, like off to the side. So the podiums are usually crowded. Uh, the year I was going was the year Kyler Murray was going to be the number one overall pick. So, like, that day, Kyler Murray had, like, all the media. Did you see him doing all of those stretching exercises? <laughs> no, I didn't see him doing those. Uh, <laughs> he had, like, his limbs attached to two 18-wheelers, and they started driving no. in opposite directions really slowly to stretch him out a little bit. No, Make no. Make sure he wasn't 5'4". But they had the eight quarterback podiums, and then they have a bunch of just the late round or maybe undrafted guys over to the side. And those are the fun guys to talk to because – you get one-on-one -on -one time with them. You can talk to them about all manner of things. Yeah. That was actually, I believe, if I remember this same year, that was one of the tables Titus Howard was sitting at. Okay. He was not at one of the eight podiums. Nobody was talking to Titus? Nobody was talking to Titus that year, and then he was a first-round pick. Can't believe it. Yeah. So uh, the podium or the the interviews and the podiums are fun. You, you meet a lot of NFL people. I mean, and that's where deals start getting started and get done, and that's where teams start talking to each other and – I mean, everybody who is somebody in the NFL is there, and people run into people all the time, shaking hands and stuff like that, and conversations start. And I'm assuming this is where Nick Casario is going to start kicking up the Deshaun Watson stuff. Yeah. To me, this is the most important week of Nick Casario's tenure as Texans GM. To this point, he's going to have more important weeks, hopefully, moving forward. But you combined the combine, obviously. The Texans have nine picks. They only had five last year. They did not have a first or second rounder last year. So... A lot of the guys they were looking at, well, they were kind of wasting their time because the best players there they weren't going to get. But they've got nine picks at least, hopefully more, with the Deshaun Watson trade. And speaking of the Deshaun Watson trade, to your point, Cody, this is a massive networking week. Everybody's going to be there. Every GM in the NFL, except for the Rams, I guess, because they don't have any draft picks like at all this year, is going to be there. So you could start cooking up a Deshaun Watson deal, make some friends, but also, more importantly, make other teams want Deshaun Watson a little bit. So massively important week for Nick Casario. There's also a fair amount of owners that show up to this, yeah. too. And if an owner had some questions about Deshaun Watson or the Deshaun Watson situation, if he just, oh, I don't know, all of a sudden showed up at the same restaurant that Nick Casario was at, maybe they could have that conversation. Mm-hmm. A lot of networking yep. going on, not just with media members. It can happen between the teams, too. So hopefully Nick Casario is trying to raise the value of Deshaun Watson up in Indy this week. Here was Nick Casario, courtesy of HoustonTexans.com, on how he's going to use the combine to help the Houston Texans improve. It's about getting information. So whether it's from players or you know, you're going to talk to different people throughout the league on other teams. So it's about information, every you know agents. So there's a lot of people that are there. So you kind of have to sift through, like, good information, what information you're getting that's actually usable. It's also about, I mean, he talks about getting information. He's going to be disseminating some of that information. People are going to ask. He's going to have to update people in the Deshaun Watson situation and what he knows because he may know a little bit more than we know on the Deshaun Watson thing. If they've been working closely, Deshaun Watson, the Houston Texans, Casario may have a better working knowledge than we are aware of of the Deshaun Watson situation. As far as things that could happen this week that impact the Texans, I think the biggest storyline with the Combine in general every year is the quarterbacks. Regardless of what we think of this QB class, most Texans fans we interact with want this team to trade down. Well, you could say trade down. Who's coming up, though? Usually teams that come up, especially in the top three, are coming up for a quarterback. So if you're the Texans, you got to hope that some of these quarterbacks – 
emerge this week, have really good workouts, blow people away with their skill set, you know, dominate the underwear Olympics, so to speak, whether it's Kenny Pickett, if his hand size is big enough to be the first quarterback off the board, or if it's Malik Willis being able to show that he's accurate enough where you could coach him up because he's got some special athletic traits to take the next step. So I think if you're a Texan fan, you want this uh, this week to go where these quarterbacks play really well, and that will increase the value of that third overall pick for you either to take a player or trade back with a team that wants to come up and get a huge haul. Those interviews would be important for those quarterbacks because they can't do a tremendous amount from a physical standpoint. Like, a guy runs a little bit faster than you thought. That doesn't improve his draft stock that much. But the interview room, a lot of teams throw quarterbacks right on the whiteboard and see if they can trick them, get them to showcase what they know, and the knowledge, the is, recall. Is John Gruden going to be there? I don't think. Well, maybe. No, I don't think <laughs> we're going to allow him. No, probably not. I don't think we're going to see that bit on ESPN anytime soon. Yeah, so interviews are huge for quarterbacks. Medicals will be big for quarterbacks. Yeah. If there's any sort of thought about those guys' health, that's probably, probably the biggest thing for Matt Corral coming off the injury that he suffered in the bowl game. And, uh, I mean, look, you mentioned Kenny Pickett, the hand size. It's a big deal. When they start measuring the all the heights and weights and all that kind of stuff with the quarterbacks, we'll know the Kenny Pickett hand size. And there's only been one quarterback that's been extremely successful with a hand size under nine inches. That's Mike Vick. And Kenny Pickett ain't no Mike Vick. What do you think he's doing to increase his hand size? It's Because he'd be an idiot if he wasn't trying anything. And I don't think Kenny Pickett's an idiot. I think he realizes whether it should be or not, this is a big deal in the eyes of some teams, if not all teams. Like, what exercises what's his regimen to increase his hand size before the combine so apparently if you get professional massages on the hand from from hand massage experts it will increase the pinky finger to thumb length of your hand okay these are not the massages deshaun watson was getting not that type of massage what if that what about like if you just like pop your knuckles a bunch would that help I don't think it makes your hand wider. Okay. Somehow stretches it out. I don't know how that would work. I don't know why I said that. I, I read it already. I, the hand size thing bothers me. I almost want Kenny Pickett to be an amazing quarterback <laughs> just to send a giant bleep you to any of these NFL teams that won't pick a kid because they don't think he has big enough hands. Well, only if he's less amazing than Davis Mills. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. But what if the Texans get a huge haul to move out yeah. for a team that wants to come up? Maybe both sides can win here. Look, this is something that we haven't brought up, and maybe I shouldn't bring it up here, but I, I don't know why everybody is just assuming that Detroit is not taking a quarterback at two. Like, every mock draft I've seen has the Lions going elsewhere, and I get this. This is not a great quarterback class, but the Lions, like, their long-term plan is not Jared Goff. So everyone's like, ah, I'd probably be Atlanta at six, or, or Carolina at six, or Atlanta at eight. Like, they'll probably be the first team to maybe fall in love with one of these quarterbacks. What about a team like Detroit, who's known for screwing things up on draft day, who clearly needs a quarterback for the future? Like, I don't know. That could be a really good case scenario for the Texans if one of these guys balls out and the Lions are enamored by one of these dudes, and maybe we see mocks where Detroit goes QB at two. I mean, a BK, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but if that happens, you realize what scenario pops up then for the Houston Texans at number three overall. Wolverine what? Aiden Hutchinson Could there be. at three. I mean, my goodness. Run to the run to turn the pick in, Nick Casario. Fly all the way to New York, turn the pick in yourself. Okay, that would not be very efficient. No, I know you have efficient. a long-ass time to make your picks, <laughs> yeah, but it ain't that long. Not that long, no. no. I actually have a, a, a few more combine storylines that we can get to if we want to. And I have a theory as to why I don't think the Lions will take a quarterback at number two. All right, well, if you want to live in that alternate reality that we don't like, that's fine. You can live there. Alternate reality that is... More likely a fact. We break it down next. You're listening to The Wheelhouse right here. ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Thank you for watching my video. If you like the content, then please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And make sure you tune into The Wheelhouse on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5 weekdays from 3 to 7 every afternoon.